Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Joe. In the last episode, we have completed all of the settings in the inspector. When we press the spacebar, our current experience will increase. When they receive enough experience, our player will level up. When we reach the max level, everything works fine without any errors. But we don't want to only view from the inspector. That's not what we want. So in this video, we will create another UI manager script to connect our player status with the UI elements. So let's get started. We have created one UI canvas. First, let's right click on our canvas and go UI, select text, and change his name to name text. We have downloaded one font in our project. You can download any font from this website. Feel free and use it. Also, you can go to my Google Drive and download my any other episode projects. Then, adjust the UI text position and its size. Also, if you want to see clearly, you can add the outline component to our text. First, let's think about how many UI elements we need to display on our canvas. We can open the player status script to check. We need our player name, description, HP, MP, attack and defense, level, experience, and the next level experience. Hmm. We may not display the description on our canvas. We only display the player name because both of these are the string type. The description might be have so many words in this case. In later collectible systems, we can add the description later. Select our name text UI text game object. Hold Command D or Control D to duplicate this game object. Then drag this game object to the right position. We don't need to care the spacing between each game object now because later we will use the vertical layout group component to solve them more effective. Inside the text component, we change a string that will be shown on the screen. I feel the front size is so big so that decrease the front size first. Then create one empty game object and change the his size making this size will be the right position. The vertical layout group component places its child layout elements on the top of each other. Their heights are determined by their respective minimum preferred or flexible heights according to different conditions. Then drag some of our UI text elements as a child of our game object. If you want to change their spacing, you can click here. In order to see clearly, let's rename these several UI text now. Rename our empty game object as text part. After that, we also need another several UI text to display our real status. The direct way is to select our text part game object, hold command D or control D to duplicate this group game object, and drag this group to the right side. We can now simply change the text component text, but we know that later all text content will be controlled by our script. We just make our script look real. Now we want to build one bridge to connect our player status with the UI elements. We want our player name can be assigned to our player name UI text. Let's create one empty game object called UI Manager. Then create one new C-sharp script called UI Manager as well. Then drag a script to attach to our UI Manager game object. Before we type the text type, we have to use Unity Engine.UI namespace. Create one new text variable called player name to hold the references to the UI text component on our UI text game object. Pause the video and try it.
Then let's first drag each game object to their right place. Because our game object text name is the same as the variable name, it's handy for you to drag the correct game object to their slots. We don't want to put all UI display function inside the update methods. We want each click we can update once instead of updating each frame. So we create one new public method called update player status. Since this method will be called in our player status script later, we set this method as a public field instead of the private field. We want our name tags.tags is equal to our player status player name string type content. Try to type that. The red line appears because our UI manager script did not get the player name from player status script. He did not have the right references. So you can use the singleton pattern to solve this part. Singleton pattern can make your variables global accessible. If you want to learn more singleton pattern, you can check my singleton pattern tutorial. In here, we simply declare one public player status type called lowercase player statics. Also, script or object also can finish it. Many methods can solve. So we can write lowercase player status dot player name. Don't forget to drag the game object with player status script to our UI manager. Then we can use the send step to try. Pause the video and write by yourself. Using the two string methods can change the string type. Another handy way is on the front of our integer type, write double quotes. To tell the unity, I'm using the string type now, so the following type will be the same type as the string type. We can change the Visual Studio's layout, making us easy to check. Now we have connect each UI parts with our player status data. The final UI text is our next level experience UI text. It will be a little special because our next level experience is the array. His index in here is our current player level. Our current level in our UI manager should be the lowercase player status dot current level. We need to get the player status type first and then access the current player level. It looks a little long, but it's very clear. Great, everything is correct, except we did not call these methods. We want our player status update at the beginning of the game. When we press play, our name and many other places are correct. But we want to each click, we can update our data. So inside our player status script, when we press space, we will call add experience methods. So we can call our update player status methods inside the add experience methods. Write find object type of UI manager dot update player status methods. There are two errors on our current progress. First, our forward slash disappear. It's so weird. 
Oh, because I missed the forward slash inside the double quotes. The second error is easy to ignore. At the beginning of the game, our next level experiment should be 1000 instead of the zero. However, when we click the button, the next level experiment will change to 1000. Hmm, why? Pause the video and think about it. I really recommend you to think about this question because unlike the previous questions, this question involves one important concept on the unity mono behavior. I can give you two hints. One hint comes from my previous video, Camera Control. We talk about one potential mistake when we use the update methods responsible for following our target. Another hint is here. Think about when we press the play button on Unity, what Unity should do at the beginning of the game. Why Unity executes to zero first instead of 1000? Pause the video and think about it. Please give yourself a couple of minutes to think about these questions. Ben to here. The reason is that our update player status call on the star methods, and all of our array initialize at the star methods as well. For Unity, they start on the same order. That's not make sense. We want to run the update player status methods when Unity has already had the next level experience. In other words, we want to run our player status script earlier than update player status methods so that our update player status can know each detail data number. Imagine if we did not have any variables, how to update these variables into our UI part, right? Inside our player status, Let's try to run the array initialize methods first. We can directly use awake methods. Awake is called when the script instance is being loaded. Press the play buttons and test it. Now it works. Also, let's change the awake method back to the star methods and introduce our second solutions. Another professional way is to change to the order of the execution for event functions manually in Unity. Select our edit button and select the project settings and click on the execution order. Compared to our first solution, imagine we have more than 10 scripts only using awake or star methods will make your logic messy. So our first solution has its own limitation, where the second solution can order manually by yourself. In project settings, we can press the add buttons and add your scripts to here. Then change the order by dragging the script. The top script will run earlier than the bottom one. So dragging the player status to the top position will be run earlier than UI manager script. We need to first run the initialize of the array. The next order is the update player status. Don't forget to press the apply button. Try to change the order of these two scripts and keep all methods are star methods. Leave some notes behind the codes. Each code with commands you can download from my GitHub. All scripts have my commands which can help you easy to understand. In the next episode, we want to display more feedback in our canvas, including how much detail number increase when we level up. We will add more obvious UI elements to highlight the differences instead of only changing statics in a blank of eye. When we reach to a certain level, we want to update our player image. Also, animations and particle system will be involved in the next episode. So stay tuned and the episode 3 will be coming soon. The text version of these videos has been attached to the links below. Also, all resources can be downloaded from my Google Drive and GitHub. For more videos about Unity tutorials, Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator, and game design, you can click my profile and subscribe to my channel. I so appreciate it. Alright, see you in the next time.